Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing why it is necessary to know and understand the new covenant. That word covenant means agreement between us and God. And we know that Jesus told us as he was at the Last Supper, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, that Jesus said that this cup, as he drank the vine, the grapevine of, of wine, he said this, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Beloved, unless you understand what the covenant, the current agreement between human beings and God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, you will not be able to find rest and peace for your soul. Once you ask Christ to forgive you of your sin, that you may now have a relationship with the creator, if you don't understand what this is really all about, you will be swept away with every doctrine that, that is, I mean, there are so many voices in the land. When we stray away from the simplicity of the gospel, if you don't really understand what happened for you, that when Jesus went to the cross, beloved, and he said, it is finished, he bought a completion to the law, according to Romans chapter seven and six. But now having died to what bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the law, the written code, the, 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 613 laws, or shall I say covenant, that was made between God and Moses on Mount Sinai. Now, I need you to take notes in this quick exhortation. The covenant between God and his chosen people at that time, Israel, we find it in Exodus chapter 19, verse 24. God made a promise to Moses, if you all do these things, I will do I will bless you. This was given at Mount Sinai. Most commonly known, the Ten Commandments were given at Mount Sinai. This is what is called the Mosaic Covenant Agreement. But we also find there was an agreement between God and Abraham. You will find that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 14. That is the Abrahamic Covenant or Agreement. Then we find in Genesis chapter 8 and 20, God made a covenant, a promise with Noah. He promised Noah that he would never destroy the earth again by flood, by water. And he told him, whenever you see the rainbow in the sky, it is a sign of that promise. So now, beloved, we also find that there was a covenant, an agreement between God and the Aaron, uh, the Aaronic priesthood, Aaron and his sons. God made a promise, a covenant with them in Numbers chapter 25 and 13. And we also find another covenant. Why is this important to know, beloved? Because if you don't know the covenant that you're in right now, you will be swept away with do this, do that. All of the works of the law, this would include the most common work of the Old Testament law agreement is tithing. It's the most common uh, uh, um, misleading, misquoting, bashing of, of scripture in the modern church world where many corrupt preachers use the old Mosaic covenant and its laws to, to seduce many people to submit and to give them their resources illegally. Why? Because many of us do not understand the covenant that we are under. Then we find in 2 Samuel another covenant. It was between God and David. It was it's called the divinity or yeah it's the covenant of David. Uh, uh, an agreement 
with him, you'll find it 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8. Now, beloved, why must you understand these covenants? Because the new covenant is found in Christ Jesus. In what? His shed blood brought forth the renting of the veil that was in the temple. The original tabernacle that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai instructions to build that moving tent. There was a veil that separated the most holy place from the holy of holies. And that beloved was rent in the temple of Herod when Jesus went to the cross. Why is this vitally important to know? Every follower of Jesus should know these facts. Because when Jesus died, that veil rent. And no longer are we alienated from God once we turn and repent. Stop sinning. Turn away from your lying, your cheating, your stealing, your debauchery, your lasciviousness. Beloved, once you get serious about sin in Christ, the veil is rent from over your spiritual eyes and you are born again. You have an awakening, awakening to the true and the living God, and you will become aware of the fact you are a sinner and you need a savior. Now, I need you to follow me, beloved. As we go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, it says this about that veil. You, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. Excuse me. That's the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. Listen. This is what Paul writes about the veil, because there are many people who have no idea they are churchgoers. They pay tithes. Some of them are Sabbath keepers. Some of them, you know, they won't mix fabrics. They cover their head. And I'm not saying, you know, if you cover your head, it's evil. I'm not saying that, but I am making a point. If the veil is not removed from your heart and your eyes, you will continue to be duped. You will continue to be deceived into doing all manner of workings of the law. And you will be miserable because you cannot do anything to appease God because there have already been a lamb slain. And that was Jesus Christ. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 14. Paul wrote this. He said, but their minds were closed. He's talking about the, the Jewish people. When Jesus was walking the earth, their minds were closed. For to this day, the same veil remains at the reading of the old covenant. The old agreement between God and man that was established at Mount Sinai. God gave it all to Moses and he wrote with his finger those 10 commandments and the 613 laws. All of this was given to Moses. This was Exodus 19 through 24. He said, now, the reading of the old covenant, that veil remains. It has not been lifted because only in Christ can it be removed. Ooh, oh, friends, if you only, do you understand how powerful what I just read? Unless you meet the real Jesus and you are hungry and thirsty, the veil of darkness will continue to consume your life. It's called religion. That veil of religion and tradition and rituals will move you to the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the Old Agreement, and you will not find rest for your soul. Because Jesus Christ is the only one that can remove that veil. And this is why we have radical groups 
preaching Old Testament covenant law because they do not know the living Christ. The new covenant in Luke 22 and 20, that is the dispensation we are in right now. It is redemption through the shed blood of the lamb. That means that if you are trying to appease God with your church attendance, attendance, your Bible reading, um, many people have made church attendance alone a God. If you are trying to be or submit yourself to corrupt leaders that force you to be a member of their churches, all of these are works that has nothing to do with the living Christ. You will continue to walk in darkness because until you are moved behind that veil, meaning it is removed and you are on the other side where Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You will not have life. You will just have religious rituals because the old covenant and anything that is uh, tied to that old covenant, ceremony, the way you dress, you find some preachers that are dressed up almost trying to dress the way Aaron and his sons did. They, they almost wear ephods. They go back to that old covenant. They go back to the Old Testament ways and rituals because why? The veil hasn't been removed and they use outward adornment. They use all types of rituals because they are lost and drenched in the old covenant. The new covenant, beloved, we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 16, he has qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, a new agreement. Not of the letter, the law, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit of God, when you are truly born again, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Once you are born of the spirit, you will have life. You will not be consumed with depression and darkness once you have come to the true and the living Christ. He liberates your soul. He removes that veil. You come onto the other side where there is life in the spirit. He or she that has an ear, let them hear that we no longer are subject to the 613 laws that were given at Mount Sinai. We have been liberated as Romans 7 and 6 tells us. He died to what had bound us. We have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way. My God, have mercy on us all. Please allow me to give you one last scripture. Eat it that you may be consumed and that you may know this new promise, this new agreement, this new covenant. Paul wrote it. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 16. A man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have believed in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law because by works of the law, no one will be justified. But if we seek, we shall be justified in Christ. My God in heaven, he or she that has the ear to hear. May your soul be liberated from dead works. 
and may you learn to walk in the Spirit. For whom the Son has set free by his blood, you shall be free. God bless you, my friend. Till next time.